Hey guys, it's Numi. How is your coin collection growing at the moment? Uh, are you flipping? Are you buying for your collection? I've got a few coins here that uh, I've been saving up that have arrived in the last couple of weeks while I've been putting out the mega grading results videos. I've also got a theory that I wanted to try out with you guys. Where are the best bargains when you're buying coins at auction? And uh, I always feel that the best bargains are the ones that are um, right at the end of a world coins auction. When everyone's spent their money, uh, all the enthusiasm has gone. Uh, the people who've stayed up the other side of the world to watch the auction progress have fallen quietly asleep on the sofa and are failing to put their bids in and press the button. What does this mean? It means that countries like South Africa sometimes come off worse than countries like Australia, because um, one's at the beginning of the alphabet and one is near the end. So there are some great bargains to be had uh, in auctions by looking at the countries whose names start with letters towards the end of the alphabet. So uh, with that said, I wanted to show you these coins that arrived from one of those countries, South Africa. Um, it's a really, really interesting set. And uh, we've got here a silver set of eight coins and a spare coin from within the set. Um, in 1923 in South Africa, um, the the kind of British, British South Africa kind of mint in Pretoria was just getting up to speed. And uh, sovereigns from 1923, um, particularly ones that are circulation are incredibly rare. Proofs, there's only 655 I think were minted. But there were two sets of coins. There was a long set, which contained 10 coins, um, and then a short set, which contained eight. The short set contains just the silver coins. The long set contains the silver plus the half sovereign plus the sovereign. So if you add together the mintages of the long and the short sets, I think there were something like 750 odd of the short set, 655 of the long set. So even the silver coins are pretty sought after and very rare, not many of them at all. These are all proof coins. The gold is incredibly rare. And uh, the gold coins produced um, in 1923 in South Africa are some of the rarest and most sought after coins. However, there's a tiny bit of a mystery which is maybe explained by the auction, um, <laughs> the auction placement by, um, by country that I was talking about. And that is that for coins that are sovereigns with 650 odd mintage, they should be quite a lot more expensive than they generally are at the moment in the second-hand market. So if you do want to uh, keep your eyes open in an auction and stay awake until the letter S, I think there is a chance that uh, with the short set, the long set, graded, ungraded, uh, graded sovereigns, half sovereigns, you can pick up a little bit of a bargain for the rarity of these coins. Uh, and maybe uh, sometime in the future, auction companies will reverse out and start from the letter Z and go back to the letter A. And then your S letter coins will go up in value phenomenally because they'll then be at the beginning of the auction whilst people are still awake. The month of May is going to be a pretty big month for new coins. So why not use the special code for May, valid until the 31st of May, and the code is Larry. The code is Larry. 
valid at thecoinconnection.co.uk. I'm never sure what the Larry was that uh, Coin Connection were talking about. There used to be a game in there called Larry the Lounge Lizard. And uh, there was the famous uh, Dirty Larry. No, Harry. Um, Larry the Lamb. I don't know who it could possibly be. Who knows who the mysterious Larry actually is. So uh, the rest of this video, I'm going to bring you a few of the more interesting unboxings, a few of, a few of the more interesting arrivals of coins. Most of these coins that you're going to see arrived to be graded. Some um, just arrived for other reasons. I'm never quite sure when I receive these envelopes, uh, quite why somebody has chosen to send me these coins. Sometimes I don't find out about it till quite a way afterwards. So let's see what delights are waiting for us inside this uh, jiffy bag. So it looks like there's a couple of coins, both slabbed. And the uh, question is, what are they and what are they doing here? Why have I got them? And what does the owner of these coins expect me to do with them? Quite a few people have been sending me recently PCGS coins to Crossgrade uh, to NGC. And we've covered this in the Mega Results videos. But um, I took a look at one today, for example, that was sent to me for Crossgrading. And I thought that it just wasn't worth it. And I think anyone who's thinking about sending coins for Crossgrading, the value potential does really need to be there. And uh, I know people do it for different reasons. And uh, this one has been sent in for cross-grading. Uh, it's in a PCGS holder. So uh, why has it been sent in? It's a perfectly nice Proof 64. So I think the requirement with that coin is probably that um, it gets reviewed for cross-grading at proof 64. If it crosses, then it gets conserved uh, to see whether it can get up to 65. And uh, so if, if it works according to plan, then it might get into a slightly higher grade uh, holder at NGC. However, with that particular coin, there's not a massive amount of difference in the market value of a 64 compared to a 65 what would you guys say i mean my I, I think a 64 is probably now going for maybe a thousand pounds something like that between 950 and 1100 um over the last three or four years that coin will have shot up from maybe seven or eight hundred to a thousand so it's already had quite a big uplift in value. Well, we could probably talk for another few minutes just on cross-grading, which is quite an interesting subject, but um, unfortunately there's a bit to get through on this video. And uh, the next package that's arrived is a package that has been sent by, um, by somebody, I think, from a Facebook group bought by another person on that face group who lives in another country and sent to me in order to take a look at the coins and uh, decide whether to conserve them or just to grade them or to send them straight back and reject them. So let's have a look and see what's inside the packing material and what uh, delights await here. It's quite nice sometimes when a box arrives with all the packing material uh, exactly how it came from the mint because quite often when people send me things for grading I don't get a chance to see all the paraphernalia and the COA and the mintages and everything that came with it. Uh, I just see the coins maybe in the capsules. Uh, that's right, that's the way it should be 
but uh, sometimes like on this occasion I get to see the whole box and I can show you guys a little bit more which is a nice thing to be able to do. So we can see that this is a raw mint set. Um, you've seen more recent boxes and you can see that this probably dates to, I think they stopped using these in about 2012, these kind of boxes. So it's probably between about 2008 and 2012. Okay, so this is the 30th anniversary of the one pound coin. So the, the various royal arms used on the one pound coin. So it's um, a fairly specialist set. And the one pound coin is quite interesting. It's a little bit, I guess the same size, uh, it's a little bit more gold in it probably than a pied for sovereign. They're quite heavy, these coins, quite a lot of gold in them, but um, they're not very big. And in, when you put them in slabs, of course, uh, a bit like the Pied Fort Sovereigns, you only see a small coin, but actually they're quite thick. So uh, you know, maybe people shy away from them for that particular reason. Uh, I don't know. So there are three one pound coins in this set. The set was issued in 2013 and there were 100 of these sets only produced. So the mintage on these things is very, very low indeed. Taking a look at the specs on the back, you've got three coins. And interestingly, the mintages on two of those one pound coins are 100 coins only. So this is actually a pretty rare set. Quite often with Royal Mint coins, the rarity isn't taken into account in a massive way by the secondary market. So even though this is rare, watch out because rare doesn't necessarily mean a massive amount of demand or incredible value. So don't necessarily get taken in by that, but at some stage, people might understand how rare these coins are compared to the equivalent coins from other countries uh, like the United States, which produce more mass market coins, and uh, take account of that and value these probably in the way that they deserve to be valued. So I was saying that if you take um, an average sovereign, that's got about, what, 7.6 or so grams of gold. Um, a Pied Fort Sovereign is like 15 or so grams of gold. These things have got 19 and a, and a bit grams of gold in them. So there's, they're, they're pretty hefty, thick coins. And uh, if you see these in the secondary market, um, and people sometimes in auctions haven't really cottoned on to the fact that the gold content of them is pretty high, uh, sometimes they go for an undervalue and it's worth watching out in eBay auctions uh, very, very keenly for these one pound gold coins where you get a nice chunk of gold and people may be looking at the size and think it's a quarter ounce of gold where actually it's 919.619 grams of gold. So uh, pretty good. So I mean, even the gold content makes these things highly valuable. But if you take these two coins here, which have a 100 mintage, um, that really does provide uh, quite a lot of rarity as well to go with the coin. One of the things that may put some people off British gold coins is often they aren't standard um, weights. So you've got um, a lot of, you've got you know, one penny, two penny, five penny, ten penny. You know, you've got all of these coins in different weights from different sets that are around from, say, 2002, 2008. Um, you've also got these one pound coins that are slightly non-standard weights, not exactly half an ounce, not exactly quarter of an ounce. And I think that may put some people off uh, these coins. However, the market has grown for sovereigns that are a non-standard weight and 50 pence pieces that are also non-standard and maybe these ones have quite a good upside. 
Right, let's take a look at the next little arrival and see what's in this um, little packet here. Well, this package is a little package that came through and uh, all it really had on the envelope was the postmark. So uh, I've been able to see where this was posted from. But um, if you recognize this and this is yours, please do get in contact. Um, it was creatively packaged in a squashed toilet paper tube and uh, full commendation for the creative packaging but uh, zero points for not putting a note in this coin with these coins to say who it belongs to because um, although you may have referred to it in a message or an email you know, I just don't really have the ability to look back quite often and see who, who promised they would send in specific coins um, so if this is yours and you recognize these coins and uh, you know the email, uh, sorry, you know the postcode that was sent in, please do get in touch. They're very nice coins. Uh, hopefully they'll grade well. I have actually now sent these for grading, so they will come back graded. But when they come back, I will have no idea who to post them to or who to charge for the grading fee. So please, can you get in touch and let me know if these beautiful coins belong to you. So the coin that you're looking at here is a, uh, an 1825 sixpence in very, very nice condition. Um, the reign of George the fourth. And uh, this one should grade, uh, I think very, very well. Looks a really nice coin. What do you guys think? Maybe anything between a 63 and a 65, I think for that one and then there's another one this time uh, a coin from Edward the seventh um, map proof 1902 and uh, Edward the seventh had to wait pretty much the uh, the same kind of amount of time as Prince Charles is having to wait for his mother to uh, to relinquish the throne but um, History says that he was a remarkably loved king uh, after being thought of as a, um, a playboy and a philanderer and uh, all the kind of stuff he used to get up to, including visiting French bordellos and bathing in champagne baths and that kind of stuff. So that's all you've got for me today. Hope you like that. Please like, subscribe comment and there'll be more of the same as soon as I possibly can.